older than the memory of man, more widely used than any other food, rice means life and nourishment to vast numbers of the human race. Yet today, in many places, the cultivation of rice is carried on exactly as it was 10 centuries ago. The seed is sown by hand in small plots of ground, irrigated and harvested by hard labor, and all for a small yield. In other sections of the world, however, rice growing has advanced. By scientific methods and efficient machines, many growers plant large acreages and reap bumper crops of rice each year. The rice grower knows that the ground must be properly prepared to receive the seed. To break the land, packed hard by irrigation water, is a tough job calling for top-notch equipment. Harrow plows that can be held to uniform depths are used by many growers. And plenty of power to pull the plow is needed, too. This tractor pulls a five-foot harrow plow three miles an hour, turning 17 acres of rice land a day, a fast economical method of plowing. Harrowing is the next step. When the soil is cloddy, the rice grower usually waits for a rain before harrowing. Rain helps to break the clods and sprouts the weeds. Harrowing at this time kills the young weeds. A harrow with discs that stay sharp even in gritty soils speeds the work of preparing the seed bed. With the broad acres of level land plowed and harrowed, seeding time arrives. Not so picturesque as the farmer of yesterday who threw the seed broadcast over his fields, but much more efficient is the present day farmer with his end gate seeder. From the large hopper, the seed is forced downward to a spinner, which distributes it evenly over the field. The arm of the old sower might tire, but this machine, driven by sprocket and chain from the wagon wheel, works without rest, planting many acres a day. More desirable for many sections is the rice drill. With this, the grower is assured an even distribution of seed, covered to the right depth. The double-run feed cannot crack the tender seed. And with accurate distribution of fertilizer, the seed is planted under conditions most likely to obtain maximum yields. Following the seeder is a spring tooth harrow, which pulverizes the soil to hasten germination. Now the seed is in the ground, waiting for the life-giving water to start growth. But before irrigation begins, there is one more job for the rice grower. He must build low dikes or levees to confine the water in the field. In the Louisiana, Texas field, where over one half million acres of rice are under cultivation, levees are often built with a harrow plow. Higher than it looks is this 10 inch levee, which will hold water on 25 acres of growing rice. An ample supply of water is vital to the rice grower. Water to make the good earth productive. Water pumped out into the fields, soaking into the soil, germinating the seed, and sending the young green shoots of rice springing upward into the sunshine. Operating on natural gas, a power unit pumps 2,000 gallons of water a minute. Another grower mounts his easily portable engine on a wagon and moves it quickly from field to field. From the engine, a belt drives the pump at the canal, lifting the water above field level. In days gone by, bullocks walking in endless circles or human beings operating treadmills raised water from ditches and canals in limited quantities for small fields. The modern rice grower employs a gasoline or diesel engine to take the toil out of pumping water. Mixing with silt and soil, the water flows a half mile before spreading into the rice field. For the next few months, water will stand four to eight inches deep in the fields. Rapidly, the rice grows taller and taller and becomes sturdy and strong, giving promise of a bountiful crop to come.
The days lengthen and grow more humid. The tiny flowers bud and bloom and grow into grain. The grain matures and the rice stalks bend. The crop is ripe and ready for cutting. A few weeks before cutting, the water was drained from the field, allowing the crop to mature and the surface soil to dry. Working quickly to harvest the crop, binders must stand the wrenching strain of being drawn at full speed over levees and through the fields. Often the crop is wet from improper drainage or late rains, and wet straw is apt to rust out the platform and binder deck. This McCormick Deering binder is protected against damage from rust by having exposed surfaces galvanized. And the wheels are enclosed to keep mud from clogging between the spokes. The cutting and binding mechanism of the binder is driven by the power takeoff of the tractor. So wherever the going is rough, the tractor may slow down, but the speed of the cutting and binding is maintained. The first wheel type diesel tractor built in America. Many rice growers rely on economical diesel power for growing and harvesting their crops. The right soil, good seed, and modern machines assure a bumper crop. After cutting, rice is placed in small, solidly built shocks to cure and dry. In 10 days or two weeks, it's ready for threshing. From field to thresher goes the crop. And here's a grower well prepared with an all-purpose wagon and fast-moving tractor to haul the heavy bundles to the thresher. Feeding the large capacity thresher keeps a crew of men and several wagons busy. As each wagon arrives at the thresher, the bundles are quickly tossed onto the self-feeder. Rice bundles frequently are heavy and wet. To do the work efficiently, a rice thresher must be designed to separate the grain in whatever condition it may come. This McCormick Deering machine is specially built for threshing rice. It does a clean job without cracking or passing kernels. Supplying steady economical power is the same tractor that pulled the binder. Modern machines have brought efficiency to the rice growing industry. The rice bundles in rapid succession are forked onto the feeder. Steadily, the hooks on the knife arms reach out and pull them in. Retarders hold back the lower part of the bundle while the top is combed off into the threshing cylinder. A hurricane of air blows out the straw. A steady stream of kernels falls into the bag. Bagged and ready for milling, a sack of rice tips the scales at 200 pounds, a good lift for two men. With 50 sacks on the flat bed of a sturdy truck, another link is added to the chain of international power used by the rice grower. International engineers have built a truck that can stand the gaff of heavy going, a truck that is built from the ground up for truck work. Each bag of rice is a silent witness to the efficiency of the grower. The price received for the crop depends on the percentage of sound kernels, moisture content, and freedom from foreign seeds. All of these have been guarded against by the grower. The miller samples each sack to determine the grade. Down the chute goes the rice and falls between surfaces set to rub and shuffle away the hulls. As in most human affairs, value depends a good deal on appearance. So the brown jacket is rubbed off, and underneath is revealed a shining white dinner coat. A handsome fellow, this rice at the table. In this mill, 1,600 pounds of rice are hulled, and 600 pounds of rice bran or grist are ground each hour. A dependable international power unit turns a pulley shaft which distributes the power. Steadily, the rice falls into the bag. Having passed inspection, the rice is sacked. In these sacks is the warm sunshine of the growing days and the richness of the good earth. And in these sacks, too, is the work of the grower and the work of the miller and the work of the modern machines they use so well. On its way to near or distant lands goes the rice. 
Husky hands dump the sacks into a net ready for swinging into the ship's hold. Rice for the Orient, rice for England, rice for France and South America. The farmer of today produces an abundance unknown to those who use the primitive implements of yesterday. He applies to his work the advantages of modern machinery. Thank you.